Okay, the first thing that we want to do is download the Java load generator, and you can find the link to download uh, the, uh, the load generator in the resources link. Once it's downloaded, we're ready to simply kick it off. And when you kick it off, you basically specify what nodes you want the load to run against, the number of threads that are going to do writing, and the number of threads that are going to do uh, reading. And there's obviously a little bit of prep work, some tables that need to be created, etc. But once that all happens, within a couple of seconds, you'll start seeing load running against um, the system. You can see there are already reads and there are already writes being logged against the system in our output window. Now let's bring the web UI into focus. And again, we're running locally, so it's basically your local host IP, port 7000. And if we click on the tablet servers icon, we can see our three node cluster uh, running. And you can see that there is load running against it. You see the read and the write columns have values in there. Fairly well balanced. It means that each node is participating roughly equally in servicing both reads um, and writes. The next thing to do, now we're in the green terminal, what we want to do is actually bring down one of the nodes, and we're going to remove node number three specifically. So you see that we've got the acknowledgement that we're stopping T server number three. And if we bring the web UI back into focus um, through the magic of time lapse, we'll see that after 60 seconds, that node will have missed uh, all of its heartbeats and will get flagged as a dead node. So now we see that it's flagged as a dead node. You can see that there is no read and no write activity happening, but you can see that the other nodes are still adequately servicing both reads and writes. Why? Because together they can, they can put together a complete consistent database. Now let's restart node number three. So let's get that node back into the cluster. Let's start rebalancing the node, getting the data that it's missed back into it. You can see that the, uh, the uh, T server is now back online. It's got a PID number assigned to it. And if we go back to the web UI, refresh it, you can see that it's now marked as alive and you can see in the read and write uh, columns, the load is starting to balance out. So it's participating almost equally at this point uh, in successfully rebalancing. Now let's add a fourth node. So now let's expand our three node cluster into a four node cluster. So we've got the acknowledgement, we're adding a node. We get the T, we now see that our uh, node number four has been assigned a PID. And if we refresh our web UI, you can now see that fourth node has joined our cluster. So that's an example of how you can horizontally scale a cluster while you have actual reads and writes running against it. Uh, without any sort of errors. All the rebalancing is happening transparently behind the scenes, and you can see in the read and write columns that the uh, fourth node is already participating because it's very quickly gotten the data that it needs 